Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is He Jung Do of the uh, MFDS. I would like to thank the organizer uh, for giving me uh, this opportunity to make the presentation. I am a member of the, the working group of the ICH E11A, and that is why I've been given this uh, opportunity to make the presentation. Today is a holiday, but we, uh, we see a lot of people in attendance, so I want to thank our audience. And I want to uh, talk about things that I have learned as by working with the working group within the ICH E11A. And uh, this was actually signed off uh, in August of 2024. So this is the latest uh, guidance. So I'm going to talk about uh, this guidance. ICH E11A is, well, E11 uh, was uh, revised back in 2017. After that 2017 uh, revision, the the people at the pharma companies, at the uh, regulatory authorities, as well as uh, associations, well, they uh, felt that there are, uh, they felt that uh, it is uh, necessary not to do any of additional uh, you know, clinical trials for the pediatric patients without any uh, clinical uh, benefits. So they thought about using the existing information. So that was the consensus. And as was explained, so utilizing modeling and the simulations. And those of, uh, they have advanced uh, quite uh, significantly. And if the reviewers have experience uh, related to modeling and the simulation, uh, they could be uh, utilized uh, further. So that was that consensus. So based on these uh, consensus, uh, with the revision of the E11, the uh, new uh, uh, development approach related guideline development concept paper was uh, finalized. So that was back in 2017. And the working group was assembled right away. And uh, uh, MFDS was participating in the working group from the very beginning. I was like the third person from the MFDS to participate in this working group. And uh, the uh, the people that have participated in the working from 2017 are uh, still in the working group, you know, in 2024. But in Korea, when there is an organization of reshuffle, uh, then uh, the people that are seconded to the working group is also changed. So the people have been telling me that I, uh, you know, they, they hope that I would stay in the working group uh, for a longer term. The uh, the pharmaceutical associations are the foundation members uh, from Japan and uh, from EU. And so not just the regulatory authorities, but also pharma uh, companies. Uh, they they send people uh, to the expert working group so that, that they can share opinions and so that how they can better uh, represent the interests of their group, their countries. So I saw that as I was, as I was participating in this working group. But unfortunately, uh, I'm the only person from uh, MFDS that is participating in the working group. We do not have anybody from the Korean Pharmaceutical Association. And as was mentioned by a pre uh, pre uh, from the previous speaker, well, uh, the, m I mean, there are some, of course, Koreans that are participating in working groups as part of the IFMA. Anyway, uh, we the rapporteur is from the FDA, and he is an excellent uh, leader. And uh, speaking English is a, a little difficult, but uh, when we have an online meeting, the uh, rapporteur uh, from FDA uh, would be a uh, very uh, considerate. They would be uh, exp uh, would be very uh, kind and uh, help us. Uh, you know, with the language uh, problems and. And so this in this working group, even very small opinions were all reflected. 
So all everyone's opinions, all the opinions of the uh, members were all incorporated and we had sufficient time for discussion. And from 2018 till 2022, we worked on draft and then uh, we had a public consultation where we have heard about 1200 uh, comments and we discussed about this 1200 comments uh, to come up with the uh, revised version and that revised version is the one that is finally signed off in August of this year. And this is the table of contents in the guidance. So, well, you know, table of contents is very important even when you take tests. So we uh, invested a lot of time in creating on uh, this table, table of contents. If you look at the table of contents, you will know what this guide, uh, guidance includes. So it has introduction. It talks about objectives, the guidance, guidelines, about the background, about the scope, uh, what are the uh, general uh, considerations, and it also describes the pediatric extrapolation framework as well as pediatric extrapolation concepts. And uh, to, for the concept, you have three considerations. One is the disease, a drug pharmacology, and a response to treatments. So that is a about it, how the drug res uh, respond or react in body in a uh, in a effective and a safe way, and uh, we would have you know this as uh, so we would look at this totality of evidence to come up with the concept, and uh, with the uh, concept uh, we would uh, discuss about uh, the data that is required uh, for the development of this pediatric uh, development. And based, uh, we would then create plans. And the PKPD uh, design, whether we're going to go with the PKPD uh, PD design study, whether we're going to have an efficacy study, or whether we're going to have a single arm, a control a study to uh, find efficacy, or whether we're going to have a you know, controlled uh, group uh, with, uh, with you know, clinical uh, study that is larger with the control group. And so we're, so we're going to have this uh, plan, uh, you know, about what uh, sort of uh, clinical trials that we're going to have. And about uh, the implementation of the pediatric extrapolation is not all at the end. When we have the information, that information or the, that output would have to be used for another uh, pediatric extrapolation, and that is included in this table of contents. And as for the objectives, I think I mentioned this briefly in the beginning part of my presentation. Back in 2017, uh, the U.S. EU already had uh, the guidelines or the concept guidelines for the pediatric uh, extrapolation. The U.S. could have like a full extrapolation or could do in you know, a partial extrapolation, uh, extrapolation. They had that sort of uh, terminology. And FDA reviewers uh, when or the EMA reviewers, when they do the review, they would, you know, of course, look at many different types of data. And based on that uh, data, they would have this uh, more a uh, systematic approach. And so that those approaches about the design, about the statistics or the modeling and simulations, well, uh, that sort of uh, information is to be uh, included and uh, that we should be uh, utilized uh, for the uh, the study. And we also wanted to make sure that as part of this guidance that we would have more unified terminology. And uh, so the pediatric uh, extrapolation is defined in the ICH E11R1. So this uh, and also uh, E11A is part of the IC8 E11. We, in our working group, we deal with uh, the approach related to pediatric extrapolation. And here, if, the, uh, if uh, there's a particular disease and that is very similar uh, to the disease for the adults, and of course the reference could be in uh, you know, adult or the adolescent uh, data, 
and but the, our, our indication is for the uh, the children and if the children could be between the age of like a two and eight and so for the pediatric pa population if the disease uh, characteristics are similar and a drug uh, uh, reaction safety and efficacy are quite uh, you know very uh, similar then we could could uh, think about uh, you know, uh, collecting uh, evidences uh, you know, to show that uh, the drugs are effic uh, effective and a safety. So those things have to be uh, considered. And so we have so we will have to look at the existing data and see how that data is uh, in that data what sort of similarity is shown uh, between uh, the uh, the population that where we want to apply uh, that data to to the data from which the the uh, information was actually uh, gathered and based on that uh, we could uh, decide you know what sort of uh, clinical studies we would uh, conduct and historically I mean, we are uh, conservative. So when it comes to efficacy or effectiveness, uh, we could extrapolate data uh, from the adult uh, studies. But when it comes to uh, uh, safety, we were quite uh, cautious. And so as a, a member of the working group, I was really surprised that uh, because uh, they were if you know if there were in a significant or a, a, a sufficient a correlation between the uh, existing data and the uh, and the the pediatric population that even safety could be uh, extrapolated so that was what i found quite interest uh, surprising and there are uh, general uh, considerations and for the pediatric population you could say that we you have this adult of uh, of you know clinical trials, but uh, in, if you don't have like a phase three uh, for the pediatrics, you would just think that you could just do you know uh, pediatric phase three uh, clinical uh, trials, uh, but uh, it's not that uh, simple. Um, of course, we would have to utilize the existing uh, information, and we would have to get additional uh, scientific information, and you would also. Uh, have to have a proof that there's a clinical benefit uh, for the uh, the pediatrician uh, the pediatric patients to take part in the uh, clinical trials. So those things are the. I mean, I am giving you the overall information about the general considerations. And so, what does it mean to be uh, sufficiently uh, similar? It's more than just yes or no question. The existing data would have to look at at a totality. And uh, so for that, we could, of course, have modeling and simulation. And so, so after, uh, you know, after a certain uh, threshold, we could say it's similar. So we could, you know, propose such a criteria for similarity to the regulatory authority. This is quite difficult. And for the, uh, in developing pediatric drugs and indications, the uh, companies have to have a frequent interaction with the regulatory authority. That is uh, defined even uh, MFDS's uh, guidelines or the guidelines. And so there has to be cooperation and there has to be uh, interaction from the very beginning portion of the drug development for the pediatric patients. And between the reference and the target population, in terms of uh, there has to be uh, like a continuum of similarity or this, uh, this similarity in disease and drug pharmacology and response to treatment. And it has to be not a one-time thing. It has, there has to be a continuum. So if this sort of a drug, I mean this class of drug, whether it could be applied for other types of disease. And that is looked at from a continuum point of view. So under this concept of continuum, we look at all the data. That is, the working group looks at all the data.
So the data we have and the data from um, the outside, they have to be all these data have to be considered together to get the uh, information we need to make a decision. So that is what is described here. And if you look at uh, figure one, so this uh, describes uh, pediatric extrapolation as a continuum. Uh, if you look at the upper uh, figure, it's about the concept. There are three important elements here. It all talks about disease drug pharmacology and response to uh, the treatments. And then there are arrows here. If you go to the right, it means more similar. If you go to the left, then it's uh, more uh, this similar. It's uh, quite uh, intuitive. And that is why we have used uh, this uh, arrow to show more of the similarity and this similar and this similarity. And there are uh, many data sources uh, from uh, non-clinical and preclinical uh, data as well as the real-world data. So the PK dosing efficacy safety-related information from those uh, sources are utilized, and and the what we uh, what we need to know what we do not know. I mean, there could be like a knowledge gap, and there could also be uncertainties, and they need to be analyzed and compared so that uh, this drug, we could say, is similar. Therefore, uh, we can do uh, the extrapolation. And we do, we have, and then we need to see, you know, uh, we have to have like a, a, like a confidence. So we should be able to show how much confidence that we would have in this data. And so we would like uh, integrate all of this data. And based on that, uh, you know, potentially, what sort of study design we should have. If the design, or excuse me, what the data itself is sufficient, if we have a data that is of, you know, similar to the data that could be uh, produced from phase three, which means that we would have less data required. But if we do not have information, sufficient information, uh, then uh, means that a lot of data is needed. If a lot of data is needed, but we could should do an ICT study. If not, a lot of data is uh, is needed, then we could simply do extrapolation. We could do like a modeling and simulation. Then we could use exposure of uh, PK uh, data could also be needed. And then you know, so that all of this should be included in the plan. And so. And also, uh, the output of the plan implementation are utilized in creating concepts. That's what this uh, figure is trying to show you. And the figure two shows the pediatric extrapolation uh, framework and also what is described in this guidance. The first uh, phase or the first step is the concept development. And the second step is, is uh, creation of plan. And the third is the execution of the plan. In uh, developing concepts and, and creating plans, I mean they cannot be separate, because uh, we once you know what sort of data you have, you know what data is needed, and that way you I mean, that is uh, means that you need a plan, you know, to be able to get da data. And once you have that plan, uh, that plan will have to be executed. But in terms of execution, this should not be so different from uh, other types of plans. And once you are successful in terms of the execution, then you would uh, do the submission, regulatory submission uh, for approval or for uh, revision. However, uh, as you can see on the right-hand side, uh, so the so through a public consultation, we would we would get this question as to if this is of like a indefinite circle, but whether uh, the the plan succeeds or fails. So we the what is needed is the review of the disease and drug pharmacology and response treatment. What I'm saying is that the uh, whether we have been successful in this whole uh, process, that uh, data is going to be used again for the disease and dr uh, drug pharmacology and response to treatment uh, review.
And so, uh, so figure one and figure two. So proposing those sort of figures, I, I think I could participate quite actively because I didn't have to speak because I just needed to write. And so uh, the figure two here, I got involved quite significantly. So I have quite a bit of affection on this uh, figure. And this is uh, data that was presented by somebody from EMA. And this is about the concept. So it's almost, you see, as you can see from the picture, it's about uh, putting all the puzzles together, and that puzzle could come from my data. It could also come from the, the data of others. So when we have uh, aggregated all this data, we would see some we, uh, the data that we know, some data we do not know. Uh, what are the models? How do we have? Um, uh, how, so, in, so depending on the population, how, how similar are the disease as well as the responses of to the treatments. So all of that information should be contained in the concept. And the uh, concept uh, requires an understanding about the factors that can influence, as I said, the disease, drug pharmacology and response to treatment and the safety. And so uh, we ask, you know, many different questions to get this, uh, to get better understanding of such factors. So once we have a, f a concept, uh, you know, you have to have uh, uh, questions related to these factors, and you should be asking these questions to get the answers together. And about uh, the disease, you have to. Uh, be able to, for instance, uh, determine the degree of similarities or this uh, similarities of the disease as a part of the concept. And also, there's a dis you have uh, about the uh, pathophysiologies of disease. I mean, there are many factors here. If the the symptoms are similar, uh, you know, how similar are the manifestations between the reference and the target populations, and how are these manifestations or the symptoms have measured, and also about the severity of uh, these manifestations among the uh, population groups. So they have to be all looked at uh, very closely as part of the looking at the pathophysiology of the disease and also the course of disease. There has to be evaluation about the similarities and the differences in the course of disease of, of development uh, in the, between the reference and the target population. Here you have to uh, look at what are the endpoints, uh, for instance, what are the some of short-term and long-term outcomes of the disease, uh, you know, and uh, are they you know similar for the reference and target population, and also uh, what are the available treatments you know that are being used for both the reference and the target population, and also about the target pharmacology the uh, ADME properties, as well as uh, mode of, of action, as well as uh, PD, uh, should be included as part of the evaluation of the uh, drug uh, pharmacology. And about uh, the, the weight of the body of area and, and the age, uh, the, as well as the uh, drugs clearance and the volume of uh, distribution. So all this information have to be uh, compared as part of the evaluation of the drug of pharmacology. And as for the drug uh, response to treatment, uh, when it comes to extrapolation, the the drugs are characteristics and the drugs response in adults. Uh, well, that sort of data used to be used. I mean, they're still used. But what we're saying is that for a uh, similar uh, disease, uh, uh, there could be a different um, drug could be used, or a diff uh, the, the drug in the same uh, the same class could be used, or it could be uh, 
and so are uh, the so and the responses to these different classes or the types of the drugs have to be uh, collected and uh, and then uh, the similarities have to be identified that's what it means that uh, that we need to look at the response to treatment and this has to be looked at with a disease, of course. If the target itself is a receptor or protein, and if they are uh, the, for instance, somebody who uh, is deficient in the protein would have uh, the disease, then if the, uh, the drug targets such a uh, protein, then that protein uh, would be a very important part of looking at the disease. And as mentioned previously, those exposure and response to a treatment would show you know, how much drug is exposed, and depending on the uh, exposure of the drug, would determine uh, the uh, the response uh, to the drug and the safety and the efficacy of that response. And that has to be uh, assessed as part of the response to treatment. And depending on the development as well as maturity, well, the response to uh, drug exposure uh, would also be different. And that should be evaluated as part of this response to treatment. Uh, generally speaking, in terms of endpoints, do we have the same endpoints? Or do we use uh, have a different endpoint? You know, one we used a biomarker, uh, the other one we might have used a clinical endpoint. Uh, for uh, adults, it was a secondary endpoint. Uh, for the uh, the pediatric patient, it was actually a primary endpoint, and so there would not be one or one matching. And so, but uh, we would have to consider a different endpoints that have been utilized. And that uh, information would have to be all uh, compared as part of the response to treatment. And as for uh, the uh, safety considerations, there are uh, quite a bit of a consideration here. Some considerations are related to age. Some are related to uh, the uh, the uh, amount and quality of safety data, and about uh, uh, about on or off target effects of the investigational drug, and. Op but uh, long term, uh, the first uh, effects are uh, exist, you know, for that particular uh, drug, and depending on the ex uh, exposure, uh, the uh, the PD of response will be different in reference population uh, from the target pediatric uh, population. And if there is age-specific safety concern, uh, if there are gaps in terms of uh, information, then uh, there could be a post-approval a safety assessment. And for the new molecular entity or the on-off target uh, effects have a relevant pediatric safety, if there's a, a significant uh, safety findings exist, then uh, a, a special attention have to be paid to them, and there could be uh, the and they could be the basis for additional collection of data. Here I have uh, here you have many different types of data uh, for the same drug and for the same uh, disease and for the same class and even if it's a different class but it's the same drug that all uh, the uh, information the data uh, would have to be uh, collected and all this information would have to be uh, integrated to have a totality of evidence. And if we have identified any gaps you know, in terms of knowledge, then we would have to incorporate that as uh, part of our uh, plan creation. And in this concept uh, for the uh, about the similarities and the dis uh, similarities of the concept, well, w w the evidences will have to be provided. And also there have to be a sufficient analysis of the si available safety data. And uh, we, there has to be an assessment of the gap in uh, knowledge and the, how they affect the confidence and the uncertainties and the extrapolation concept. 
And after that, of course, uh, once we have all this information within the concept, then we will be creating the pediatric extrapolation plan. And and the the plan uh, would be uh, based on uh, various types of the data uh, that is uh, model-based analysis of data. And uh, for the pediatric extrapolation plan, well, there are general considerations such as we could include adolescents in adult trials in order to have uh, more quicker of implementation. And we could also have you know, modeling and simulation approaches. And there are quite important, it's very uh, technical, but at the MIDD, EWC is currently in operation and they will be dealing about modeling and simulation approaches. We are simply dealing with like a, a declaratory information when it comes to uh, modeling and the simulation approaches. And in those selection, you could use modeling and simulation or you could use existing data. And about uh, biomarkers. And if uh, biomarkers are used uh, compared to the clinical endpoints, uh, we could do a clinical trials with a smaller uh, pop, uh, patient population. So there, uh, so we could use uh, biomarkers. But these uh, biomarkers, whether they should be validated, not really. So uh, as long as, uh, so. So when there is a certain a justification and with a lot of, uh, of a discussion about the biomarkers, we could use uh, the biomarkers. However, as I said, there has to be a justification for the use of biomarkers. And there is something called uh, endpoint and differences. If the target and the reference, they have different endpoints, even if they have you know endpoints, but the, if they have been, if they are included as part of the primary or the secondary endpoints, we can still use those information. And about the design, uh, so exposure matching approach or the PKPD approach and efficacy uh, studies uh, could be included as part of this design. I wanted to show you examples, but it seems that uh, I do not. I don't think I have the time for that. Uh, we are working on the training materials, and in during our first. Uh, uh, public consultation, uh, we have received many comments and those comments are being incorporated into the revision of the guidelines. And hum Humira, which is TNF alpha, a drug, and it's so a blockbuster drug. For that a drug, it's uh, if it could be used for the RA, and if the drug that we want to develop for the pediatric uh, population, but if we have only the data from the adult clinical trials as well from the non-clinical uh, data, and so if there's going to, then we could compare the uh, diseases, you know, for the RA and either idiopathic of uh, you know, uh, arthritis, then we could use the PKPD data of, uh, and do the extrapolation. So that is something that we are working on. And so once we finish uh, working on that, that's going to be made available on ICH uh, webpage. So, for the pediatric uh, indication and the pediatric drug development, we have to uh, maybe emphasize efficient so so that we can um, uh, maximize the result with the uh, minimum uh, amount of data that is available. So that means existing uh, data and the existing uh, technological advances are to be uh, utilized to make this uh, drug development for pediatric. Uh, population. I want to use this opportunity to thank the members of our working group. And this is a picture of everyone in our working group. Thank you uh, for your attention.